I know when and how to 3D track objects. <laughs> but I'm not allowed to tell you. First, import your clip into After Effects. Drag the video into a new composition. Set the frame rate of your new composition to the next whole frame number. And set the start time code to zero. Now render the comp as PNG sequence and tick the use comp frame number checkbox. Next open up PF track. Click the project button and create a new project. Set the default frame rate to your clip's frame rate and press confirm. Now drag and drop frame 0 from your render folder into the node window. Set the clip frame rate to that of your video. The first method I will use is the camera solve. Press the node button and select the auto track node from the tracking column. Click the auto track node and select the mask button. Select the bezier roto and draw a mask around the face. We only want static arrays where there's no deformation so exclude the mouth or it will interfere with the tracking. Then track and keyframe the mask. If you're happy with the mask, press the invert button so only the area inside the mask gets tracked. Press the mask button again to get into the parameter window. Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. Add just the candidate and target numbers. The window size determines the size of the tracks that will be generated in the area. Set search mode to optical flow. Set deformation to rotate scale and skew, and set consistency to local motion. You can always read just the settings and track again if you're unhappy with the tracks, then press auto track. It will track for the duration of the clip. You can set the range by adjusting the from and to frame range. I needed more tracks so I lowered the window size a little more and tracked again. After the track is done you can go through the timeline and delete obviously faulty tracks to make it easier for the camera solver. Drag a camera solver node into the node window and press solve all. Press the dual view button on the top right to see the track in 3D space. If you can recognize your object from the point cloud go to the error tab press the trim button and lower the error threshold for the tracks so that bad tracks will be ignored. Shift click the refine all button to refine the solved camera. This process is try and error. Repeat until you get a satisfaction track. You can choose to create a test object node to check if your track is good and not jumping at any point. I choose the thumbtack object and place it onto the point cloud. You can manipulate the object by switching the interaction mode.
If you are happy with everything, select the export node. If you use Sanima 4D Select FBX 2010 and set the scale to between 10 and 100, For Blender users, choose Collada D8. The second method you can use is the Object Track. You can also create a node by right-clicking. You don't have to use a User Track node, but it will help the geometry track orientate itself. Press the Create button and select points with high contrast, and then press the Track Forward button. If any track loses its target, you can either correct it by dragging it to the right spot again, or deactivate it from that point on by pressing the Remove and Hide Forward button twice each. This is important where the track will stay on the same spot, but it's still active and interferes with the result. When you have made a few good tracks, create a geometry track node and press the load button. You have to select a 3D modal on your computer to act as reference for the track. So choose something that is a similar shape. Here I imported a generic head 3D modal. Press center, pivot, and view and place the object to match your footage. Check the moving object box before tracking where the camera will move instead of the object. You can choose to activate the mask you created earlier to limit the tracked area. Activate the helper tracks you made in the user track node. Then press the track forward button. The track can deviate after some time, so you can create a keyframe by positioning the object again on the timeline and press the Add Key button. After you created a keyframe, go between two keyframes on the timeline and press the Refine button. When you're happy with the result, you can export the track with another export node like shown before. I use object tracks if I want to use some physical simulation in my project. I use Cinema 4D, but the process is the same for Blender and other 3D applications. First, import your 3D track file. You will see a camera node object which contains your tracked camera as well as the point cloud in your test object. Set your render settings to match the resolution and frame rate of your clip. Also adjust the project or timeline settings to the right frame rate, or else the track will not align in your final video. I load the PNG sequence into a background object so I can place the 3D modal correctly. I think everyone here knows the basics of working in a 3D program, so I will not go into every small detail. Download any 3D modal you want to use from the internet from sites like Sketchfab or the Modals Resource. Create a geometry that acts as a shadow catcher, place it on the point cloud and try to match the head form.
I aptly a shadow catcher tag to the geometry to hide it from the render. Import your 3D modal into the scene and place it on the shadow catcher geometry. The shadow catcher will hide the back of the 3D modal. Add just the lighting so it matches the scene. I just like the scene with the HDRI. Disable the background again so it only renders your 3D modal. Add just your render settings and make sure you render with the alpha channel enabled. Wow, it's just like real life, man. What the? Import your render to match sequence back into After Effects. Right click and choose interpret footage. Set the frame rate to the one of the original clip. Do the same for the pre comp you made earlier. Place the image sequence in your comp and it should be tracked perfectly. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo!